All right, so today I want to talk about Azanthix, and believe it or not, there are six different lines of Azanthix, and the lines of Azanthix are not compatible, meaning if you actually bred them together, you would not get visual Azanthix if you're breeding two different lines of Azanthix together. And today I want to jump over to the internet, and I want to show you kind of the basics of the Azanthix and what it does to some of the morphs when you add Azanthic into the mix, and I want to show you some of the different lines of Azanthix and some of the potential of those different lines of Azanthix. All right, so I'm gonna jump over here at morphmarket.com and I wanna start with a normal, classic, wild type ball python so you can see what an effect the Azanthic has on just pretty much starting from the base morph. So this is a normal ball python. You can see it has quite a bit of kind of this goldish color in it. Some have a lot more yellow, some are a little bit more brown, but take a look at this. When you actually have an Azanthic, this is what happens to a normal ball python. I'd say this is probably Probably one of the best examples that I've ever seen of an Azanthic. This is really what you want and you want a snake that is it pretty much strips away all the color and you're left with black and silver and kind of this grayish color all through the snake and it's kind of interesting you can actually go through all the different like uh, even in the specific line of Azanthic there's a lot of variability within that line a lot of times you'll find even so for example this is actually the VPI Azanthic you actually see a lot of VPI Azanthics that are not as impressive as this one. And it's kind of interesting, usually when they're small, they start out kind of a real silvery color. And then as they get a little bit older, sometimes they can gray out and get a little bit co more color as they age and mature. So I just kind of wanted to pick out a few of the really nice examples of a VPI Azanthic. And the interesting thing about this VPI is there's larger numbers of VPI Azanthics over here on Morph Market than any other Azanthic. And I think that's one of the benefits of actually getting into the VPI line because there are more options. So if you get into the VPI line, there's, there's a lot of other VPI combos that you can buy that are compatible with your VPI Azanthic. Versus if you got something that's not so popular, you kind of have you know the limitation as far as what you can buy. And a lot of the stuff, you actually have to make it. This is actually a recessive mutation so to actually get anything into the snake you have to breed it to something else and get the heads and then breed the heads back together to get a visual to get more genes into it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with some of the basic genes and then add on top of that the VPI Azanthic. I just kind of want to show you some of the combos with just the VPI line of Azanthic to start with. So this is actually a spider ball python. The spider it has kind of the spider web pattern that comes up through the snake. Really awesome morph. And it's kind of interesting with the spiders. A lot of times you can have more or less white coming up the sides. It almost looks like, you know, like a calico type of pattern that brings up the white. It's not calico, it's actually part of the spider mutation. And over here, if you actually add Azanthic to the spider, take a look at this. This is probably, hands down, one of my favorite combinations, the Azanthic with the spider. And this is probably one of the better examples I've seen some that even look better than this on some YouTube videos. They almost look like they're made of silver or some kind of metal. It's really awesome if you get a really nice line of a xanthic in with the spider. Here's another one. The pinstripe is one of my favorite morphs. It's a bright gold snake. It's dominant, so you breed it with something else. Half the babies come out pinstripe, and when you mix it with Azanthic, you pretty much lose all the gold color. Take a look at this. It strips all the color out, and you end up with what kind of looks like a pinstripe completely stripped of all the color. It's pretty awesome, and that's essentially what Azanthic does, is it takes a morph, and it strips away all the color, and you're kind of left with a black and silver kind of a grayish looking snake. Here's another one, this is the banana, and I'd say the banana's kind of unusual because it's one of the few morphs that can actually break through a little bit on the Azanthic. Take a look at this, this is the banana. The banana is co-dominant. You know, you actually breed two bananas together, you get a super banana, which looks almost like a regular banana. And if you actually add Azanthic, two copies of the recessive gene, take a look at this, you actually have a banana that's a little bit faded out. You can definitely tell there's some color coming 
going in through the banana and it seems like the, you know with the banana azanthic every single one that I've seen you can actually see a little bit of the banana color coming through kind of breaking through where a lot of times I'd say in most azanthics you strip away all the color but the banana is such a visually dominant morph that it looks like it's actually breaking through a little bit of color on the azanthic probably one of my favorite banana colors this looks really awesome the banana azanthic Here's another one, the albino. The albino is also recessive. So if you actually bred an albino to an azanthic, you would get all normal looking snakes that are double head, head albino and head azanthic. And essentially what you'd have to do is you have to breed two of those snakes together to get a double recessive visual. And actually what you get, take a look at this. This is what we call a snow. This is a, the VPI snow. It's the VPI line of azanthic. And it's kind of interesting every time you breed an albino, and azanthic together and you get both visuals in one snake you pretty much end up with a white snake with red eyes that we call a snow Here's another one, this is a firefly, and this is kind of interesting too because this actually has the fire gene and the pastel gene, and both those genes together make probably one of the brightest yellow snakes that you can get really super bright yellow. And if you actually add that to an azanthic, take a look at this, this is kind of the opposite of what you would expect. And for some reason, if you take the fire and the pastel, put it in with azanthic, essentially what it does is it makes the white really stark white, gives a really high contrast and a really impressive look. Probably one of my favorite combos is the Firefly Azanthic. So I kind of wanted to end here with the VPIs. I kind of wanted to transition into a few of these other Azanthic lines. So pretty much everything up to now we've seen kind of the potential of what the Azanthic can do with the VPI line of Azanthic. But there are other lines of Azanthic. So take a look at this. I actually pulled up a Firefly Azanthic from the SK line or some people call it the TSK line and I would say this is probably on par with the VPI as a matter of fact there's some people that just specialize in the TSK line of Azanthic and it's, it's a pretty popular line I've actually seen quite a few snakes probably the number two line as far as numbers so uh, I would say if you're getting into Azanthic probably the best one would be to get into the TSK line or the VPI so you'd have more options as far as what you could buy to breed back into some of your combos so you wouldn't have to actually kind of reinvent the wheel and make the heads and then breed them back to get more genes into your combos so here's another one. This is actually the Jolif line of Azanthic. Not very common. There's a, not very many Jolif line, Jolif uh, Azanthic ball pythons over here on Morph Market. And the problem is if you actually bought into this line, it would take you quite a long time to work other genes into the mix because you really couldn't go out and buy other snakes that are ready to go and breed it into your project. And if you take a look at this one, this one's actually this sold for $500, which is pretty good. This is actually a spider with the pastel and the Jolif azanthic and it's, it's kind of cool you can actually make like an azanthic spider and if you add like the pastel or the fire into it essentially if you add one or both of those it works to make the whites a lot brighter and cleans it up a lot more you get more of a high contrast snake and I would say this this has a lot of potential just looking at some of these different lines of azanthic especially some of the high-end stuff where you have some really awesome combos Here's another one that's kind of interesting. I'd say it's a little bit newer on the market, not very popular at all. There's some people working with it, but it's really expensive. So, so for example, this one actually was this sold for $2,400. This is the Black Azanthic, and there's not a lot that I've actually seen actually done with the Black Azanthic. And essentially what it is, is it's an Azanthic with a lot more black in the snake. It's definitely a lot darker black than just the base Azanthic and I would say it's kind of an interesting project the cool thing is that if you actually got into this you could kind of lead the the industry as far as working with the gene that not a lot of people work with I haven't seen a lot of these black exanthics over here on morph market 
Here's another one that is actually called an azanthic. This is actually a red azanthic. And the interesting thing about the red azanthic is that it's actually a co-dominant gene instead of a recessive. And it looks, if you actually make some of these combos, it definitely looks like a full-blown azanthic. But as a matter of fact, it's co-dominant and you can actually see one copy of the gene and they actually call one copy of the gene het red azanthic, which is kind of a misnomer because normally we use the word het or heterozygous only for recessive mutations. And in this case, you can actually see one copy of the gene. And a lot of people work with het red azanthics and you know, once in a while you get what, what we actually consider to be a super, which is the red azanthic. This one happens to be the pastel orange ghost red azanthic. You can definitely tell it strips all the color and it looks like kind of like an azanthic. The interesting thing about this is it's considered an azanthic, but it brings out a little bit of the red color, especially as the snakes mature. They kind of get kind of a reddish tint to them as they grow up a little bit. So here's the last one I kind of wanted to show you. This is actually the MJ Azanthic, which is kind of interesting. This is an MJ Azanthic pie. Not a whole lot of snakes over here working, uh, you know, over on Morph Market that actually have the MJ Azanthic. And it seems like the ones that are over here are mostly het pied or pied Azanthic. We call these the lightning pied, the, the Azanthic and the pied. Really makes for a really impressive combo between the Azanthic and the pied. And it's kind of interesting. This was actually selling for three thousand dollars that's it's actually on hold from 2019 so you see some of these axanthics especially i'd say the pied axanthics are probably some of the highest priced axanthics pretty much a really high demand for axanthic pieds over here on morph market all right so it is time for the question of the day and peter mcdonald asks why did you go from a paper substrate back to a coconut husk substrate? And that is a very good question. As a matter of fact, I've been through quite a few different types of substrates, and lately I've been kind of going back and forth between paper and coconut husk. As a matter of fact, this was from a pretty old video back when I was using these Reptazorb liners, and they were like perfect fits right in the tub. They had the little holes cut out for the water dishes, and I actually went back to a coconut husk, and then the problem is, is lately I actually switched back to paper because I had a fungus gnat infection. <laughs> I had, you know, these, these fungus gnats are just all over. You can actually see them on my old videos, you know, on the front of the camera and sticking to the lenses and like bugging me in the videos and everything. They were just plaguing me. I just couldn't believe it. And then for a short while, I went back to a paper substrate. But the problem with paper is you actually, you can actually save a lot of money if you go back to a paper substrate because it's a lot cheaper than the coconut husk. But I'd say it's a a lot more work trying to chase the mess through the snake room. As a matter of fact, if you have a paper substrate, you can definitely tell when you first walk into the snake room. A lot of times it kind of smells like snake pee because you can actually smell the mess in all the tubs. You're always kind of chasing all the tubs. Whereas if you actually use a coconut husk substrate, you don't have any smells at all for weeks and weeks, which is really nice. I pretty much go through and change all my coconut husk once a month. The problem is if you actually get a fungus gnat infection, the only way to really get past that is to go back to a paper substrate. So for some reason the fungus gnats really like the, the hot, humid substrate of a coconut husk and they just kind of have an explosion. And I kind of went back and forth between the two. I'm definitely going to stay with a coconut husk substrate. It lasts for a really long time. It holds the humidity really well. It keeps the odors to essentially zero. And the problem is it's a little bit more expensive than paper and you kind of fight the fungus gnats but I'm still looking for the perfect substrate I say probably the best one that I found so far is like the coconut husk from Pro Coco and I actually get that you know, that substrate through Pro Coco directly I actually buy like a thousand dollars a substrate at a time and I get it for I think it was last time I bought it it was like eleven dollars a block delivered in a pallet but you have to spend over a thousand dollars to get that deal normally if you actually go over to Amazon and you buy an individual blocks you're probably paying like $25 a block delivered which is not really practical for a level like I'm at so if you just have a few snakes it might be good but if you have like you know hundreds of snakes you'd probably have to buy in bulk or maybe consider a paper substrate 
So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.